so we'll go into the post-processing side of things, we'll let it solve and then we'll have a look at it afterwards. So after checking the simulations, you can go back and post-process the results. Personally, I'd recommend plotting uh, contours of static pressure to understand where what's making downforce and then total pressure sweeps in order to understand uh, the flow structure around. Um, so again, this is just results for total pressure, uh, sorry, for static pressure. We can have a look under the car as well and understand exactly where you've got the low pressure regions and where are your high pressure regions. We can also display the mesh around areas as well in order to ensure that we're picking up exactly what we need to. So in this particular case, we're looking at velocity, uh, which is displaying that across the mesh. So that'll help us to understand if we've got a mesh that's small enough as well. All right, so the same with pressure. Cool. And what we'll also do, I've oh, got one more video. So this right here is an example of, of a total pressure sweep. So again, we can see here, we can look at the flow structure around the car and how it evolves with uh, evolves down the car. So we'll exit that. So we'll stop this for a sec. We'll just have a look at what's happening. So we can see here, all right, so after a certain amount of time, the residuals have started to spike. So that pretty much tells us that there's something wrong in the, the meshing side of things. So it's again, we can have a look at here. We can see around after... Uh, 22 simulations starts to go up. So what, what you would do in this particular case is go back to the mesh and start to improve the quality around there. But for our particular cases, let's just soldier on. So again, let's have a look at pressure, have a look at static pressure. I normally unselect node values, we'll auto arrange it. And we'll select the enclosure, the end plate, front wing, We've got rods, stands, and the wheels as well. So what you can see is that, so somewhere around here, we've got a very high and a very low pressure region, which is why it started to spike. So if we remove that auto pressure, let's just say, let's just go from negative 200 to 100. We can see the pressure distribution around there. If we actually go clip to range, No, let's do the other way. Let's just go minimum of that. Let's make the max negative 500. So it's more, you know, not to the point that you can even see it. But you can, you can have a look at roughly where your min and max values are. And normally you'll be around areas of poor quality. All right, uh, and then what we can do afterwards, so we can also plot, sorry, velocity. On the wheel. Oops, just chuck on auto range. There you go, so we've got zero at the middle. And we've got around 11 meters per second on the outside, which is exactly what we required. Let's exit that, and let's also do a total pressure sweep. All right, so we've got contours. We'll do contours of pressure. Just unselected everything on the left. Total pressure. Um, let's plot it on symmetry, but we'll be looking down the car. And again, just from experience, I know roughly from 100 and well, from 100 to 50 gives us some good values, right? We want to be plotting it in the Z direction. And we want to be going from around 0 to negative 3. Let's just animate that. Let's just re-put those values in, 0 to negative 3. Animate. If we look straight on and move, change the perspective from, uh, change it from perspective to orthogonal. We can animate it, if it increases frames. We can understand exactly what the flow structure is doing. What? So if we animate that again and just have a look at 
the vortice that comes off the top the top of the front wing right so around here we can see a vortice that gets that sheds around the front wing goes around the tire and travels down the car and then as the mesh starts to become coarse you can see that it loses its structure so that's another thing you can do you can also have a look at your reports as well so if we look at forces in the negative y direction not interested in your wall, ground, where we stand. We can print it. Right, so we can have a look at our forces. Uh, we can also even have a look at your center of pressure as well if you'd wanted to.